Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi everybody, welcome back to the fourth lecture of chapter nine, where I'm going to review the key ideas and terminology of this important idea of motion in the phase plane. Okay, so in this chapter we were talking about one-dimensional motion, Newton's equations under the action of a conservative force, so the force is minus gradient of a potential function, scalar valued function of one variable, so that gradient would just be the um, derivative in this case. Okay, so we know that there is this function that is constant on trajectories, and that's the energy function. And we write the velocity as v, just to be a more familiar terminology, and the energy function is kinetic energy plus potential energy. So the phase plane is the plane on which the energy function is defined. Okay, so if a trajectory is s of t, v of t, it is con for the, it's constant on this energy function, constant in time, and s dot, the s dt dv dt, is the tangent vector to the curve, to the level curve, and we reflect this by writing Newton's equation in a first order vector form on the phase plane. So s dot equals v, and then v dot is s double dot, and which is just the right-hand side, which is Newton's equation. All right, now I mentioned critical points of the potential energy function. The idea I want to get across here is that critical points correspond to equilibrium points of Newton's differential equation written in this first order form. So what I mean by that, what is, an, what is a solution of the differential equation? You take your candidate for a solution, you plug it into the right hand side, you plug it into the left hand side, and you get equality. So our solution now would be a constant value of s for which this was a corresponding to a critical point, or the gradient of v, derivative of v, vanishes for one dimension, okay, and v equals zero, zero velocity. So v equals zero and s equal whatever value, critical, whatever value we have the critical point is, it's just a number. Pl plugging in any number into the left-hand side gives us zero because derivative of a number, a constant, is zero. So we have a situation where we have located constant solutions of Newton's equation, these are equilibrium points. They do not change in time, and that is the point. Then we develop this graphical method based on solving for the velocity to find the, to plot the level sets of Newton's equation based on the geometry of the potential. So the fact that there are critical points, local minimum, local maximum, that tells us where to set our energy to find the qualitatively distinct level curves. And then we have a, some um, terminology at the end of the chapter. So the phase plane, I've defined what this is. Level sets of the energy function, clear enough closed level sets of the energy function not containing any equilibria. These are periodic solutions because if we start on them, the vector field is tangent and it, there are no equilibria on it, so the, the trajectory gets goes round and round. 
turning point. That's the point on the horizontal axis where v equals 0. Horizontal axis is s. Okay, so the, that's where the trajectory crosses the axis going from one left to right or right to left and then changes direction. Equilibrium point, I just talked about what that is. Stable equilibrium point, okay. That's where we have potential minimums. A saddle type equilibrium point where we have a local maximum. I should have said a local minimum because I don't know if it's a global minimum. Phase portrait, okay, that's just one of the um, well, an illustration of the qualitatively distinct level sets of the energy function in the phase plane. Separatrix, that's a level set of the energy function that passes through a relative maximum of the potential energy. It separates qualitatively different motions. And a vector field, we have what that is. So to go back to the um, separatrix, qualitatively different motions, it's separated, in this particular example, three distinct families of periodic solutions. Okay, in the next chapter, we're going to see an important example where we analyze this nonlinear system using the phase plane, and that's the simple pendulum. So, bye for now.